Hey everyone, it's Sarah, a lovely day here with another video. I'm on my floor because I'm going to be painting the walls and installing the flooring on my diorama here. I went to Bunnings yesterday and picked up two packs of this here. This is adhesive vinyl flooring and the stuff I got is made to look like wood. What I really liked about this style specifically is that the way the wood or whatever you call it is placed is quite true to the scale I'm wanting to use it for so yeah um, it is adhesive I am going to have to cut it though because we all know this isn't going to exactly fit if I just use it as tiles so all going well that should be relatively straightforward the other thing I got was paint for the walls uh, this is the little sample card for the color I chose and I picked up two sample pots for it. I'm hoping this will be enough. I also picked up a little roller painter set thing. I think it's meant for doing windowsills and like door trims or whatever you call them because it is smaller but hopefully this should work quite well for what we've got going here. I also have my regular paint brushes which I'm undoubtedly going to have to use for the inner corners and around the screws. Before I start painting though I do have to clear out what I've already got going in here. It's only one day after I set this up, don't worry I haven't left it in here for a week. Not that that would be a bad thing and I honestly would leave it up longer if I could but yeah, I really want to get to painting this, so I'm sorry B, but you're going to have to leave your little studio down there. <laughs> what it will mean is that I'll be able to set things up properly afterwards and it'll look more like a room as opposed to a box. Sorry B, it's time to put that down. Okay, past Sarah, I know you meant well, but did you really think this was a good idea for a video? It's pretty much just watching paint dry. Not the most captivating entertainment, let's be honest here. It's a good thing that I, future Sarah, have some sense. You guys knew this was coming, you saw the title of the video, so let's get on with the Q&A. Two months ago, I asked in my community tab if you guys had any questions for me and I was blown away by the response. Thank you to everyone who asked a question and to Aki Nara who suggested I do a Q&A in the first place. I don't think I'll be able to get through all of the questions, but I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. Why don't we start with a couple of questions that quite a few people seem to want to know. How did you first get into collecting dolls? And what made you want to collect BJDs? Well, I could probably talk enough about this for a whole video, but to be as brief as possible, I've always loved dolls growing up, but I only got into collecting them as an adult in 2013. It was then that I first discovered BJDs. I stumbled across one of Andrea's face-up story videos and I was in love. I loved their eyes, care and posability, but more than anything I just thought that they were beautiful. After a spontaneous Google search, I came to the conclusion that I would never be able to own a BJD, so I looked for alternatives. I brought Bratzilla's and an A-Zone and made a very detailed poseable plushie before finally getting my first BJD in 2017. Another thing a few of you wanted to know is who is my favourite doll? Simply put, I don't have a favourite. If I did, it really changes day to day depending who I've spent the most time with. For example, right now I'm pretty happy with Millie since I just redid her face up. However, if you'd asked me last week, I probably would have said Lee, but then who knows. With those two questions out of the way, let's see what Akinara had to ask. Having requested I do a Q&A, they naturally had a few, so let's go. First, have you ever had any bad experiences with stains on vinyl? Is there a way to prevent it? Okay, so fortunately I have yet to have any stains on my vinyl dolls, touch wood. I tend to avoid leaving them in dark clothes for extended periods of time, and Miku is wearing a full body stocking, so that certainly helps. Second question, what kind of doll care do you do, and how often? Not much, honestly. I have restrung a couple of my BJDs before, and while they were in pieces, soaked them in nappy sand as well as scrubbed them with a magic eraser. I'll use a dry magic eraser immediately if I ever notice a mark, and this generally takes care of it, no trouble at all. For dolls that I've suede, this needs to be replaced periodically too, 
but apart from that my main doll care is being relatively careful and taking preventative measures so that I can avoid having to do too much upkeep. Third question, what do you think of Cortex Smart Dolls? Well, I, I think it's cool that they exist and that there is definitely a market for them. I don't think people should buy them for their slightly cheaper price point alone though. And I don't imagine I will ever get one because I enjoy vinyl, honestly. And besides, if I wanted to get a solid doll, I'd sooner it be made of resin. Lexi Espinosa asks, Do you remember the first BJD you ever saw? I'm not 100% sure, but I'm almost certain that it was a minifee Chloe. The Doll Fairy asked, What is the next doll you hope to purchase slash your grail doll? The next doll I hope to purchase is a Doll Family H 65cm body for my little rebel Andre head. And as for my Grail doll, I'm lucky in that I already own it. That's my Jury 2005, who I still need to get around to giving a face up. Emily Polly asks, would you ever make your own BJD? I would love to, although honestly I don't see myself doing this anytime soon. I'll probably start just by sculpting a head at some point, and I may or may not do anything more than that depending on how it goes. Patrick A asks, where do you get most of your dolls and their wigs? Well, all of my dolls are from somewhere different. Some I bought second hand, but most of them I bought directly from their respective companies. If you're ever curious, I always put a link to each website in my video descriptions. As for wigs, that also varies. I own or have owned custom natural fibre wigs made by Maishka, Frapzilla, Belichick Doll World, Sugary Cuppy Cake, and by Captain Panda. I'll link them all in the description. Moon Hotel asks, what is the most expensive doll you have? I had to bust out my calculator for this one, but that would be Lee. Some people don't like to talk numbers, but screw it, I'm sure you're curious to know. Not including his eyes, hair or clothes, Lee comes to a grand total of 692 US dollars. <laughs> and believe it or not, his head alone is pretty much half of that, so yeah. I know you didn't ask, but in case you were wondering, my cheapest doll is Millie, who came in at a modest 242 US dollars. Not bad at all for an SD sized doll. This brings me to my next question from Dakota Robinson. They said that they are thinking about getting a doll like mine, but they're not sure if they should get a normal BJD or a smart doll. They then ask which is good for beginners and around $100 to $200. Well, this is somewhat of a difficult question, and it really has multiple answers depending on how you approach it. Firstly, the choice between smart dolls and resin BJDs, in my mind, really comes down to personal style preference. As for which is better for beginners, I would definitely say smart dolls, purely due to their lack of elastic and the ease at which they can be manipulated. When it comes to BJDs, I honestly think that the concept of a beginner doll is a lie. I don't think they exist. Smaller BJDs are innately easier to handle, but at the end of the day, a BJD is a BJD. If price is your limiting factor though, that's really a whole other story. Generally speaking, these dolls are not cheap. If you come into this hobby not expecting to spend some money, then you're going to have a hard time. That doesn't mean to say there aren't options out there though. As I said before, Millie is my cheapest doll, and if you're looking for a doll in the $100 to $200 range, Resin Soul would be my personal recommendation. Miro Doll is a company that makes even cheaper dolls, however, from what I've experienced, some of the quality is sacrificed for the sake of the price. Ghostly Milk asks, What are your tips for new BJD and smart doll owners? Alrighty, three quick ones off the top of my head. Okay, first one, play around with your doll. Become familiar with their joints and posability as soon as possible because the more you know about how they work, the less likely you will do something to harm them. Secondly, layer your doll's clothing. A simple cardigan can make even the plainest top look awesome and just does wonders for photos. Last but not least, be a magpie for tiny things. This might seem like a no-brainer, but even the most unassuming prop can add a whole new level of enjoyment to your doll. I really could make a whole video filled with different tips and tricks, so let me know if that's something you guys would like. Let's pause the questions for a minute to appreciate what's going on here. Look at past Sarah go. <laughs> it looks like she's finally nearing the end. Those floor tiles were literal 
hell. I cut out most of the footage for this part because it was literally just me sitting there stumped and confused or me with my butt pointed at the camera, which was a great angle for sure, but yeah. At this point, I was so exhausted. You have no idea. I couldn't end it there though. After the literal hours of working on the extremely uncomfortable diorama floor, I just had to make an attempt at setting it up. While that's happening, let's see if we can squeeze in another question or two. Jade asked, is there anything you've bought or done in this hobby that you regret? Honestly, no, and I really had to sit there and think about this one for a while, but I, I couldn't think of anything. I'll let you know if something comes to mind, I guess. Katie S. Taylor Cecil asked, do you find it difficult to make friends in the hobby? And if your dolls were real people, which one would be your best friend and which your worst enemy? Well, I'm lucky in that I've made so many friends in this hobby, so I wouldn't say I find it difficult at all. I've even met a few people in real life, which has been amazing. And for the other question, B would be both. I don't know why, but it's midnight and that's my answer. <laughs> Dee Dee asks, what is your suggestion for places to find affordable clothes, shoes, wigs, etc? Well, this all depends on what you classify as affordable. One thing you'll learn pretty quick in this hobby is that stuff ain't cheap. First and foremost, I'd suggest looking on the secondhand market. You never know what you might find. Outside of that though, there are many affordable creators on Etsy. My go-to for clothes is Mabinjo, and I'd also recommend Issa Creations AU. For shoes, Fatio has cheap velcro and lace-ups in a variety of colours. They have wigs too, which I feel are reasonably priced as well. I'm possibly not the best person to answer this question really, but I hope this helps. Gazella Parado asks, What is a reasonable price range for BJD wigs, clothes, shoes, furniture, etc? Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, it all depends on the quality. Wigs can range anywhere between $20 and $100 plus clothing items between $5 and $50 plus, and shoes between $6 and $60 plus. Furniture is somewhat of an unknown territory to me, since the stuff I have I either repurposed or made. However, the purpose-made pieces I have seen out there have been hella expensive. Noddy Fry asks, what are some of your favorite doll-related YouTube channels, and would you ever take face-up commissions? There are so many channels I could mention, but to name a few, there's Arela, Pinot Noir Ice Cream Bar, Alice Elisa Arisu, Sighthound Lady, Sea Hedgehog, Somi Animations, Jetsu Lamb, Sophie Jet, and Lomi's Playground. It goes without saying, but I'll put a link to each of their channels in the description. As for face-up commissions, I technically have taken a couple, although they have only been for a close friend. It's definitely something I would like to do at some point. The main thing holding me back is how long it takes me to do them and just how unreliable the weather is. I don't like to keep people waiting and I do have the tendency to do that <laughs> just because life gets in the way. So yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Subscribe even though I don't make videos asked. If you were to get another smart doll, who would it be? Well, it could easily change, but I still adore Serenity, especially now she's available in tea. So possibly her. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for today, but we'll finish with a final question from Akinara. What inspired you to start your YouTube channel? Well, in the years before I got my first doll, I would spend hours upon hours watching BJD videos on YouTube. When I finally got my first doll, I just really wanted to become a part of the community I loved so much. And well, here I am. That was a lot of questions. Thank you to everyone who left one, and I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you've got a question for me, leave it in the comments below. Maybe I'll do another Q&A someday. Who knows? If you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you joined me here. I upload a new video every weekend on Sundays. Thank you so much for watching. It has been lovely, and I'll catch you in another video sometime soon.